sunrise, new day's dawn, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee, we've got good lands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no Find out all about it all Outdoors with Larry Ray Make some time Take the family Ask a friend But don't delay Listen up and learn about it all Outdoors with Larry Ray Good Saturday morning. Welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray. We talk outdoors for the next 90 minutes is uh, in our 13th year on the air, and this being the uh, fourth Saturday of the month. It, it, sometimes it's hard for me to figure out because... <laughs> I'm a year older since we did the last show, okay? I have celebrated birthday number 71, and I'm happy uh, to be still vertical and still be able to do a lot of things. Thank you all the, for the birthday wishes, but being the fourth Saturday, putting that all aside, that means that we have a uh, double bonus. Ron Wong is here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday morning and uh, warm, windy still. But it's warm. I like it's it. It's better than I last like Saturday. It. Okay, last Saturday I had my uh, last uh, a garage sale. Thank you for all you folks who showed up out there in the rain and Gosh, everything I else. Knew I missed yeah, you should have been there. Yeah, but uh, anyway, and that means for Saturday it means Bill Cooks is here. Good morning, Bill. Morning, Larry. Get your, Man, ma- get your Mountain Dew uh, shirt I, on. I do. I'm, I'm ready for the lake. As soon as we're done, oh, I'm, I'm going to head out, oh. and I'm going to sit at a launch ramp and just watch everybody. Oh, this yes. is the day to sit <laughs> and watch them put boats in. There, there's three days that you go out to watch. That's right. Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day. Absolutely. And, and, and we're going to talk a lot about boating on today's show, but we're also going to talk a lot about youth events. And let's click in right now because we got a special guest in studio with us this morning and another special guest on the line we uh, have in studio my good friend Johnny McFarland from uh, the Mid South chapter of Quail Forever. Yes, sir. Good morning, Larry. Put that microphone up there, Johnny. And Johnny, uh, I know some of you thought that Don King was going to be in here this morning, but Don will be on next week's show, and we're not going to ask Johnny to sing or play guitar or anything okay. like that. <laughs> but we're going like to talk to Johnny and uh, another good friend of Outdoors, of Larry Ray, and and that's Mike Webb. Of the NRA, he is the Tennessee Senior Field NRA representative, right out of our region here. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Johnny. Hey, you and Johnny can talk all you want to some other time, and we're going to talk. <laughs> I'm paying for this right now, so uh, I appreciate you, Mike, being in. And Johnny, you guys have got a special event coming up in June, and uh, and our listeners, I know, uh, will interest be interested in this because you know, on Outdoors with Larry Ray, we really push youth involvement. And tell our listeners out there what, what you got coming up. Larry, on June 14th, this is the uh, fourth year the Mid-South Quail Forever chapter has hosted it. We're going to present the NRA Youth Hunter Education Challenge. Why heck? Why heck? Why heck? And what this is, <laughs> this is an event for kids 18 and under. They get to shoot rifles. They get This year they'll get to shoot shotguns. They'll do wildlife identification. They'll have a hunter skills test. They'll even have a... Some of them get to come up that Saturday morning and even have a written hunter safety exam. Really? Uh, but it's a lot of fun. We have kids from all skill levels, kids that have never shot a rifle before to uh, kids that have actually been deer hunting and brought home game. And the age is on this? 18 and under. They have to be able to, the young kids have to be able to safely hold a rifle or a shotgun. Mm-hmm. That's the trick. And I know, uh, Mike, uh, the NRA is involved, but this is the kind of thing you guys really have a good time with, and, and really, uh, I think it adds a lot to what you do. Yeah, it, you know, it really does, Larry, and uh, and I commend those uh, Quill Forever guys and TWA guys for helping us. 
because it was just three or four years ago, we didn't have any of the YHACs, even any of those events in the state of Tennessee. Wow. And uh, John, John and them stepped up to the plate. Uh, they were already doing a uh, youth quail hunt that the Friends of NRA yeah. funds, and they wanted to do something else. So you know me, I, I filed it <laughs> on Johnny and did it. But we also have one in Knoxville. So right now we have two big YHAC events in the state. And that's and uh, and, and, yeah. I know, and I know and I know where. Uh, Mike is on the road as he usually is, and so if we have a connection problem, how many miles do you travel a year, Mike, across the state of well, Tennessee? Well, this, uh, it's probably you know a hundred. I mean, it's probably forty to fifty thousand miles. Yeah. I just got a I just got a new lease truck. Yeah, uh, about a month ago, my old one had one hundred thirty six thousand miles on it. So wow, mm. and the old one was probably uh, not too old. I mean, three uh, years old. Three, three years, years old. old. Yep. Uh, and and, yep. and Mike crisscrosses the state. Uh, but this thing, Johnny, is uh, an event that's uh, open to the public. Yes, sir. There's no charge to participate in this event. Did you hear that? That means free, right? Well, no, it costs a lot of money to put this on, but there's no charge For to the participate kids. in the event. <laughs> the Friends of the NRA, the Friends of the NRA, have helped fund this again. Uh, we've got a lot of great partners on this. Uh, from the TWRA, which brings out a lot of volunteers and a lot of equipment yeah. for the kids to use. Uh, the great guys at Avery Outdoor Superstore come out and help the kids with archery. Uh, we have helpers from Sportsman's Warehouse and Bass Pro. And uh, even the kids will be re- wearing uh, Radiant safety glasses this year. Well, we might miss uh, we, we, all of those are friends of uh, Outdoors of Larry Ray at Radians. And, and Mike has mentioned this, too, that uh, the good folks at Radians are really stepped forward, hadn't they, Mike, with you guys? Oh, oh, absolutely. You put me in contact with those folks over there. Matter of fact, John and I toured the plant, and uh, they are one of our 2014 statewide donors. So they're they're <laughs> donating uh, ear protection, eye protection to every Friends of NRA event in the state of Tennessee this year. And we're talking to Johnny McFarland from the Mid-South Chapter of Quail Forever and our good friend Mike Webb. He is the... Uh, Tennessee Senior Field NRA representative about the upcoming uh, YHEC, which uh, everybody's got an initial and everything, uh, June the 14th at the Anderson Farm near Oakland. This will be in Anderson Farms in Oakland, and the easiest way for people to participate yes, tell them. is to sign up at www.midsouthquailforever.org. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, if they don't have access to a computer to get on the website, they can call me. Then call me at 832-8698, and I will help them get signed up. And we will uh, have all of that posted, of course, on lroutdoors.com. You can go to my website uh, and uh, finagle around, and we'll have that posted on the left-hand side of the home page uh, with all the information. How many kids? I mean, what are you looking at here? We'll limit it to uh, 50 kids. Okay. And they need to be signed up. They've got two more weeks to sign up. They need to be signed up by June 7th. June the seventh, uh, and you that's know that's the sign up deadline. The event is going to be June fourteenth. Okay, that's the week before the Mid South Junior Fishing Rodeo, and so uh, you folks out there, uh, we might could 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 we have some sign ups out at the fishing rodeo that day? Would you? Uh, if we're not full, we can sure do it. All right, so fifty kids, eighteen and under, as long as they can hold a, they have to be able to safely hold a rifle and shotgun. That lets out all my buddies. <laughs> but the, the kids don't have to have already completed hunter safety, they correct? Do. For, this is a local event, so they do not have to have a hunter safety certificate. Good. We hope after this event they'll all want to go out and get their hunter safety card. Yeah, and Mike, you said you have one over in East Tennessee too, right, you say? Yeah, we have one at the uh, Volunteer Rifle and Pistol Club, Knoxville. Bill Huff and the gang over there put that on. They do a bang-up job. Theirs is in August every year. Theirs is in August. And, Johnny, I know that the, the, the folks at Anderson Farm – open the door for you guys too on this this is a not only is an educational event but kids have fun and get to be outdoors and see some things for the kids that have experience it's a competition we have prizes they they receive points on their scores Mm -hmm. for the newer kids it's a learning experience for them and yeah ronnie and sherry and bill have just been great to let us use uh that beautiful farm out there for this event. Is there food? We'll feed everybody. Everybody <laughs> that comes out, we'll feed them a big lunch at the end of the morning. What are you laughing about, Mike? I know that. Uh, uh, hey, that's important part, though, isn't it, Larry? That is, that, on this show it is, and I know that Gene Smith, our good man Gene Smith, usually comes out and helps y'all and does some things, and, uh, and he's part of this show and everything. So that is June the 14th, and uh, give them again uh, the information on how they can uh, sign up. The easiest way is to go to our website, www.midsouthquailforever.org. 
up at the top of the page, it's got a link to uh, the sign-up sheet, either as a volunteer or a participant. And you'll take some volunteers, won't you? We'll always take volunteers. <laughs> with, with guns and bows, uh, we need about one volunteer for each kid. You do. And, Mike, I know uh, what's coming up NRA-wise. You got some things going on? Oh, what are you talking about? I was hoping you'd give me a minute to say something. I am, about Mike. This. I'm giving you one well, minute. You're on the clock. The Thursday before Johnny's event, okay. we have the Fayette County Friends of NRA Banquet. I thought you did. Yeah. At the, at the Somerville Moose Lodge uh, there in Somerville. Uh huh. Tickets are $35. We have not one, but two door prizes. We got a Stag AR with the Second Amendment logo on the Bagwell. And a Glock Model 19 compliments of the Fayette Falcon newspaper, Mr. Cash Pond there. Wow. Tickets are 35 bucks. You can give them at Mr. Cash there in Oakland, the Fayette Falcon. You can go online and buy them uh, at www.friendsofnra.org. Find Tennessee. Click right on buy your tickets right online. But it will sell out. We're way ahead. We've probably sold 100 tickets already. We can only take about 250 Wow. So, uh, and that's and a- the Friends of the Friends of NRA is what funds these youth hunts. Uh, the SCTP, we have funded $1.5 million in Tennessee right now. $1.5 million in Tennessee. Because like Johnny said, these kids uh, uh, do this for free, but it takes the the volunteers and it takes the people who uh, want to help fund it to do this. Oh, and, absolutely. absolutely. And, and Johnny always appreciates people who would like to donate, right, Johnny? Oh, we're always, always <laughs> thrilled to get any donations to the Well Forever chapter. Spoken like a true lawyer. That's what it is. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But Mike, thank you. Be careful on the road. Yes, and sir. and yes, we'll sir. we'll talk to you. Always good to talk to Mike Webb. And uh, Johnny, you hang on for a little while. We'll be back to you. Let's take our first break of the morning. Ben Hogan, our show producer, taking us out here on Outdoors of Larry Ray on Sports 790. You can find out all about it on Outdoors with Larry. For years, you've heard me talking about my love affair with Gaston's White River Resort near Lakeview, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Larry Ray, and in my opinion, there's no better time to visit Gaston than in the spring. Gaston's in the spring is all about beauty. Spring offers some of the White River's best fishing opportunities to catch lunker rainbows or pole-bending browns. There's beauty in the air when a rainbow or brown takes flight with hook and mouth. Gaston's offers more than two miles of river frontage. The beautiful scenery along the White River is a photographer's and nature lover's dream come true. But there's more. At Gaston's, enjoying the great outdoors does not mean roughing it. Its beautiful cottages are first class, comfortable, and spotlessly clean. Some even have large redwood decks. And of course, there's the beauty of the resort's restaurant, famous not only for its food, but its location perched over the White River. As resort owner Jim Gaston likes to say, at Gaston's, it costs no more to go first class. To take my advice, make a memory, go to Gaston's.com or call them at 870-431-5202. Tell them Larry Ray sent you. What kind of legacy will we leave when our days upon this earth are gone? Some of my fondest memories growing up were the times my dad took me hunting or fishing. Spending time with him outdoors was magic. I'm Don King for your Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, inviting you to enjoy a Tennessee outdoor adventure. Share the experience with someone you love. Whether your passion is hunting, fishing, boating, or wildlife viewing, our state has it all. Visit our website at tnwildlife.org or download our new app for your smartphone or tablet by searching TWRA on the go and let the legacy of your outdoor adventure begin. Our legacy. Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. And we appreciate uh, Johnny McFarland from the Mid-South Chapter of Quail Forever sitting in with us this morning. And, uh, Johnny, I know you deal with kids a lot. I, I don't mean because you've got two girls like that and one in college and, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> but I, I know that uh, uh, we like to talk about youth on this thing. And I'm sure you, having dealt with youth all uh, a lifetime with Quail Forever and Mike Webb with NRA as our uh, early guest, but uh, you need to you need to get you a, a, a book a series of books written by K.J. Houtman. 
and just give them when those granddaughters and grandsons come. All okay. Right. Gotcha. Because uh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Very good stuff. And uh, it would be great things for you to have is uh, maybe some prizes at those youth hunts that you have. And well, things that would like be great, that. Larry. That would be great. Yeah. Well, we might see. I got some connections with the author of those books. We might see if we can get a couple <laughs> of them of them just uh, to give away at your youth hunt here on June the 14th. How about that? That would be wonderful. I've got her cornered now. All right, we got K.J. Hauptman <laughs> on the phone with us from, from Minnesota. Good morning, K.J. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Thanks uh, for inviting me. I know that, uh, you know, we, we've talked to her, and, and, and we can call her Christine, but she goes by K.J. In a long time, I just called her Christine, you know, to, but uh, – she has written a series of books, and, and the, we've publicized, we've uh, announced them here on Outdoors with Larry Ray many times about her uh, her paperback books um, eight, for eight to eight eight to twelve year old kids. They're award winning, uh, like Driving Me Crazy, Spare the Rod, Duck Duck Dukes, and all those we have given away on Outdoors with Larry Ray. But now, now, KJ has come up with uh, a a book that I know is going to generate a lot of interest when it does come out in 2015, and that's why we wanted to talk with her this morning uh, about this book. It's called Zumbo. And, K.J., I know, I'll tell our listeners how this book evolved, how you got with Jim Zumbo, and how you all came up with the idea for this. Well, Many years ago, I met Jim Zumbo when I worked at the North American Hunting Club, and we had a jamboree, and I hired some of the best um, outdoor writers and television hosts to be seminar presenters. So it goes back to the 90s, mid-90s, when I had met Jim, and I didn't reconnect with him until my children's books came out that you were talking about, and I attended the POMA conference. Mm-hmm. And he bought. He was the high bidder for my books on auction, <laughs> was and he? brought them and brought them over for me to sign them for him. And he was just thrilled. And of course, I was pretty thrilled that Jim Zumbo is <laughs> wanting me to sign my books for him, right? And uh, it was later after he read them all that he was just such a fan, so generous in his compliments. And um, we started talking again, and I said, you know, Jim, with all that happened in your world, it would be a great. Story to tell. I'm sure people don't know all that happened. And he told me how he saved every email and he saved all the newspaper clippings and such. And it's just this treasure trove of information. And I asked him about telling the story and he just kind of wanted to keep it to himself. He's like, oh, there's a lot of agony in there. That's, you know, it's buried kind of deep. It hurt a lot. And so for several months, we just talked about maybe, maybe. And then last January, he was awarded the Grits Gresham Award out at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas. And he had prepared himself for booze and rotten tomatoes. <laughs> he thought he would be booed when, when they announced that he was the winner. And he got a standing ovation on his way to the podium and back to the table. And I think that receiving that award and receiving that kind of um, recognition helped put some of that angst from the blog that he wrote in 2007 away. Well, let's, let's, it, let's, before I interrupt, let's tell our listeners out there if they're not really familiar with what happened in, on well, February the 16th, 2007, when Jim was uh, uh, at the height of his career. And we know that Jim Zumbo and all the great stuff he'd done for Outdoor Life. He had his own show on Outdoor Life, on, on the Outdoor Channel. Mm-hmm. He was recognized throughout the world. And then he made a uh, blog that talked about, uh, and Bill, you know this. A a black gun blog. Yeah, he made Mm -hmm. a black gun blog that uh, talked about uh, how he felt about assault rifles Mm -hmm. in the hunting Mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, Jim Zumbo's life completely changed. Everybody jumped off the ship, so to speak. It it was scary how that went down really well i, I think mm-hmm. he said i mean he, he lost his tv show he lost outdoor life he lost great mm-hmm. sponsors uh in fact uh, the washington post uh publicized all this and said that zumbo's a career appears over mm-hmm. and then so he was in a state of agony this is the man that lives in a cabin out of Cody, uh, out yellowstone national park grew up in new york which a lot <laughs> of people don't realize 
mm -hmm. became this iconic person who in one blog seemed to lose it all. And then I'll let KJ kind of pick up the story here because that's what this, this book is not only going to tell the good, but it's going to tell the bad and what happened to Jim and how he has recovered from that. Right, KJ? Absolutely. It's, it's based on a true story. And in order to get to the blog, I need to set the stage for the career that Jim Zumbo built. Yes. Because yeah. you need to, the story will unfold throughout his entire career. And it was incredible. Um, and then in the quick publishing, hitting send or submit on this blog, um, within 24 hours, his world completely changed. Like you said, losing his job as hunting editor at Outdoor Life, uh, losing his television show, losing a number of sponsors. And um, it was just a firestorm. And I assure you, there will be some level of firestorm <laughs> and black guns on the cover of this book because <laughs> uh, that was definitely what happened from there. It forced a retirement for him. And there were a few people that reached out to him to say, Jim, don't you understand? And he really didn't. His world that he lived in, those guns, they weren't something that he utilized. Mm -hmm. And so he just didn't realize that other people had a purpose for them that was a sporting purpose that wasn't terrorism. And he found out quickly after publishing it that a good friend and neighbor just down the road was one of them. Hmm. And Ted Nugent contacted him and yeah. said, Jim, <laughs> I can't tell you on family radio what he well, said. I, but, <laughs> Ted's, but, Ted's been on Outdoors with Larry Ray. We made it through the segment. So, I mean, it, 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 yes, but he reached out to Jim and was one of the first people uh uh, and if I'm not mistaken, the Rocky Mountain uh, uh, Elk Foundation was the only one of the organizations that stood with him. And then he gets his call from Ted Nugent, and Ted, in his way of explaining things, <laughs> explained the right side of this. And so, uh, but this is going to be a book, and 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 and, and you, it's not going to come out till December of 2015 because you got to put your heart and soul in this. But this is yeah. this is to me. Uh, and we're talking to K.J. Houtman of, uh, of Minnesota, uh, who all of you people know uh, that, that follow outdoors and, and listen to her on this show, that she is a, a marvelous writer, primarily known for children's books. Yeah. Now yeah. this is, this is going to be something, uh, I'm not saying you can't do it. Look, uh, <laughs> man, you're on, you're on the board of directors of Palma. You, I know it, and, uh, your talents are unlimited, <laughs> but this is kind of a step for you, isn't it? I mean, the... It is. It is. I, I started writing um, a, uh, a column for Outdoor Hub about a year and a half yes. ago. Uh -huh. So that was my beginning of writing for an adult reader. Mm -hmm. And then last fall, and I think we maybe did a radio show yes, on we that, did. Yeah. Gary, yeah. but last fall with Bill Miller, I co-authored yes. a Christian devotional that yep. is called Reflections Under the Big Pine. And the, a reader for those stories is an adult reader as well. <laughs> so my confidence has been growing that I can write <laughs> for an adult reader. And Jim's confidence in my writing helps um, that he loves how I tell a story. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to put this life story in the form of a story in a novel rather than a biography. Uh, biography. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's not going to read like a textbook summary of, of the blog events. It's going to read more like a novel of a main character, Jim Zumbo, and his interesting life. Because in the world that really revolves around the Second Amendment that he lived in, mm -hmm. they quickly forgot about the First Amendment. Yep. And um, <laughs> he was being used as a pawn by anti-gunners during mm -hmm. the time that all of this blog happened as well. He was on the cover of most major newspapers and magazines and things like that during the period of time after the blog was written. And he's done some great things since then um, in more of his retirement years. And we reconnected our friendship through POMA. We're both on the Professional Outdoor Media Association board, and we decided, let's do this. 
And so I'm pretty excited. I'm I'm on chapter two, so I have a long ways to go. Oh. But we're getting started. I want I want to encourage all of our listeners out there to go to outdoorhub.com, join their mailing list, yes. and you'll get every day. Uh, an email with uh, the hot topics of the day, and you're going to be able to read some of KJ's stuff out there. But that's OutdoorHub.com, and it's real easy. I know I get it every morning, and uh, it's some really good reading on the outdoors. Well, I, we appreciate you, KJ, uh, being on with us again. And look forward. Can't wait. We'd like to touch base with you maybe uh, down the road while you're working on this. Uh, to get kind of an update of what's happening uh, as we do this novel about Jim Zumbo, one of the all-time uh, iconic. Absolutely. I think that's what you called him. Uh, no doubt. In there. So uh, tell tell Jim thanks for allowing you to be on to talk about this, and uh, maybe we can hook up together when, when we ever get him out of the mountains sometime, okay? That sounds really nice. I look forward to that. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. Have a great day. All right? Thank you. All right. K.J. Houtman. All right. Let's take a break. Uh that's uh, that's going to be a... Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I really gonna, am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that'll be good. When stuff. that all went down, it really floored me. Uh, oh, we were on that. We talked about that on this show for I don't know how many weeks. Right. You know, and everything. But like and, you and me, it's, uh, us, we older guys and like Zumbo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're not used to blogs. You're used to having an editor or whatever. They'll say, did you really mean to say it like this? Well, no, that's not what I meant. Well, he didn't get that chance. It was just out there. And he got it's out hammered. there, you know. Media has changed. It has changed. And just like that's seven years ago. That's what blew mm-hmm. my mind. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Ben Hogan, take us out here on Outdoors of Larry Ray on Sports 790. Let that word sink in for a minute. You crave power. You need power. And at Barton Power Sports, we put all that power right in your hands. Barton Power Sports of Arkansas combines the power of seven brands from two locations into one single company whose sole mission is to make sure you have the ultimate power sports experience. Honda, Polaris, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, Victory, and Argo. Each line standing on its own, but backed by the Barton Power Sports commitment to excellent service before, during, and after the sale. Barton Power Sports is open six days a week to accommodate your schedule. No hidden dog fees. What you see is what you get. Your deal done your way. Now that's power. Barton Power Sports with locations in Jonesboro and West Memphis. Go to BartonPowerSports.com. The power of play. What kind of legacy will we leave when our days upon this earth are gone? Some of my fondest memories growing up were the times my dad took me hunting or fishing. Spending time with him outdoors was magic. I'm Don King for your Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, inviting you to enjoy a Tennessee outdoor adventure. Share the experience with someone you love. Whether your passion is hunting, fishing, boating, or wildlife viewing, our state has it all. Visit our website at tnwildlife.org or download our new app for your smartphone or tablet by searching TWRA on the go and let the legacy of your outdoor adventure begin. Our legacy. Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. And, boy, we appreciate uh, K.J. Houtman of uh, Crystal Bay, Minnesota, uh, Fish Own Marketing, talking about the the book slash novel that she's coming out with in November of 2015 called Zumbo about the life of Jim Zumbo, and I, 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 I look forward to that. I don't think I've ever seen anybody announce a book that far in advance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that, that, that's got to that, that's gonna be exciting. Yeah. That gives me time to put it on my calendar. Put it on your bucket <laughs> list. That's right. Yeah, for Christmas that year. Hey, everybody knows this is, what What? what, what weekend is this, you call it? Bill? This is amateur weekend, baby. Amateur I'm weekend. I'm headed to the lake to watch the launch ramp. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I, and, and you know what? We laugh about that and we say that. Well, but it's however, uh, there's a lot of truism in there. Absolutely. Um, um, y- you know, do some homework. Be prepared when you go to the water so that you can practice good water safety. Be safety and be courteous to other boaters and people, especially at the launch ramp. Uh-huh. You know, you don't go to the launch ramp, back your boat in, and then decide, well, let me unload the car and put the cooler in here, and uh, let me untie this. Oh, I forgot this, and uh, and tie up boat ramp space. Bill, you know all about that. You oh, see absolutely. it just like I do all the time. I mean, it's it's amazing. You can go to a bass tournament and watch 140 boats launch in what seems like a few minutes, yeah. but then you go to a public launch on a holiday weekend, and one boat will tie it up for 45 minutes. No, absolutely, and so... You know, do a little bit of homework on that. Well, I know a man that's done a lot of homework on that because he's been involved in uh, boating safety and in, uh, in his career with the Corps of Engineers and particularly uh, in his current position uh, down at uh, Arco Butler Lake, and that's our good friend Ernie Lentz. He's the GIS program manager at Arco Butler Lake Field Office. And I know Ernie, uh, first of all, good morning. And uh, second of all, uh, is this one of those weekends that uh, you wish you were on vacation? <laughs> yes, good morning, guys. Uh, yeah, it, that's definitely the fact. You know, uh, the, the Corps of Engineers is the leading provider of outdoor water recreation uh, in the nation. We have uh, over 400, well, we got 420 lakes, and uh, it covers 43 states. And last year we had 370 million visitors. How many? Wow. 370 million. Wow. I can't count that high. No, no. So, that's more than McDonald's. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, billions served. Uh, but, you know, this is uh, National Safe Boating Week, and it coincides with uh, the Memorial Day holiday. And we want all of our visitors to come and enjoy our our water and everything but we also want them to go home so we want them to be safe <laughs> one of the things you guys do down at arca butler there um that i've noticed ernie is that if somebody forgets your life preserver and there should be one for every bo- person in a boat you guys have some at the launch ramps there that they can borrow to use that day too don't they that's correct we've got the uh, life jacket loaner boards up at all of our ramps and and our beaches Mm-hmm. And uh, so we encourage folks that if they don't have a life jacket uh, for somebody that's going to be on board, they, they're they welcome to use one from our loaner boards, and we just ask that they put it back when they when they come in. And for the most part, the, they do that. They It's kind of funny. They uh, We don't know how all this dynamics work, but uh, they'll pick up a jacket at one ramp, and it'll show up at a different ramp. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know well, how long that as happens, it shows but they, up they and... normally stay. So, you know. <laughs> We, we check them and, and get them, make sure that we've got all, uh, you know, that we need and, and stuff. So uh, it is, it is uh, important, you know, uh, you know, life jackets, uh, you need to, when you come on the water, I don't care how experienced you are of being on the water, you need to expect the unexpected. Yeah. And, and for that, you know, the best way to combat that is to wear your life jacket. Yep. And there, there's a law, too, that says for every person in a boat, you mm-hmm. have to have a life preserver. Yep. And all I know all of Ernie, all the crew will, I, I, I talked about vacation, but this this is the, as, as Ron had said off the air, uh, you got you got Memorial Day, you got July 4th, you got Labor Day. Here they go. This is the kickoff event, <laughs> and everybody's going to say, well, it's going to be 90, 89 degrees today, but it wasn't but a week ago that it was 61, so uh, the water temperature is going to jump low up. Low 70s water is, yeah, right cold. now. Yeah, the water right is still now, cold, right, low Ernie? 70s. Yes, it is, and uh, folks don't realize that, uh, you know, the air temperature may be on up there, but that water temperature is cold, and if you get a, a strong breeze uh, like you normally have on Arkabutla, yes. uh, that uh, like right now. hypothermia is, is definitely uh, a threat, and... So, you know, one of the dynamics that happens when somebody goes in the water unexpectedly uh, is what's called the gasp reflex. Yeah. Uh, you're not intending to hit the water, and when you do, you gasp, and and it can literally be your last breath because mm-hmm. at the time you're gasping, you're normally passing right along the water line, and so instead of air, you're getting water, and, you know... Uh, 
it takes less than a half a cup of water in your lungs to drown. Yep. Wow. So, Ernie, not not to change subjects, but real quickly, um, I had the pleasure of attending your physically challenged hunt last deer hunting deer hunt last year last fall and one of the things i noticed you need volunteers hunters that can help the disabled and donations to buy meals and feed everybody and to improve the living conditions there for somebody that's interested in volunteering or donating anything for the physically challenged deer hunt who do they talk to or what how, how do they get a hold of you uh, well, the best way is to contact me, and they can call me here at the Archibald Lake Field Office, and that number is 662-562-6261. And uh, just, just give me a call. We're, we're in the planning stages now for this year's uh-huh. hunt, and uh, so we're, we're, uh, I've had a couple months to kind of recuperate and, and get my head back on straight and, and with all these you know hunters and, and such. So we're, we're fixing to get get geared up the juices are starting to flow and, <laughs> and uh uh so we're ready all right well ernie we appreciate you taking time on this saturday morning we hope you have a great safe weekend down at arca butler and uh keep up the good work you guys do down there okay buddy thank you guys y'all have a blessed day all right talk to you ernie all right ernie yeah. lentz all right and uh you know, Arca Butler is one of our uh, main areas. A lot of our folks will be headed out to the uh, today, this weekend. Another one is the Mississippi River. And I don't think anyone that I know <laughs> knows the Mississippi <laughs> River better than, uh, than Andy Tweed, longtime TWRA law enforcement uh, officer for our area here. And Andy's on the line right now. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. How y'all doing? Hey, we're doing good, Andy. And I know this is uh, Memorial Weekend, and I know you're not on vacation in Florida, probably. Uh, you... I just happened to be on the beach. How'd you figure that out? <laughs> yeah. The Mississippi that, that River Beach. Isn't what we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, the sandbar. That's where he is. Yeah. It's, it seems to be a little muddy out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy, I know uh, when we get into this date, let's tell our listeners a little bit about safety precautions on the river. From from your point of view, give some safety tips. Okay, well, for uh, right off the bat, naturally, you know, the river is still high, and it fluctuates with all these storms that we keep having. Yep. So you're, you, one, you got to watch all the debris out there. Mm-hmm. But the main thing is, is wear your life jacket. Remember, the water is still cold. Yeah. We're getting some of the ice runoff from, you know, all the way up in the in the Minnesota and then all the Dakotas and all that, everything's starting to thaw out. So the water temperature out there is still in the 60s, which is cold. Yes. And if you yeah. fall in and it's a cloudy day, uh, you, you know, we're still in the edge of uh, hypothermia. Mm-hmm. Time. So you got to be aware of that, be aware of the weather. And, of course, you know, we're in for, you know, we're in the middle of tornado season, too. So if you see a really big storm coming up, yeah. most everybody's got an iPhone. Keep your eye on the weather. It's not that hard to do. And Andy, it, uh, and Andy, but, uh, okay. Go ahead. What you got? No, I was just going to say, don't study. If it looks like it's going to get bad, go to the marina and hang out for a little while. No now, problem. You love those good south winds we get this time of the year on the river, don't you? <laughs> it does. It never blows out of the south around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Andy, yeah. you, you mentioned about the sandbars, too, and I know a lot mm-hmm. of – a lot of folks uh, will be out there, and all t- and it amazes me some of the boats I see on the river. I said I, I wouldn't even get out on the on the on the private pond in some of those boats, you know. And they're lo- and they're loaded down, and they're going to pull up on the sandbar. They don't know how big that sandbar actually is. They don't know where it ends, where it starts, and uh, it seemed to me like a lot of times trouble starts when not when you're not in the boat, but when you when you're walking around out there thinking you're safe. Yeah, we've had good grief. We had a couple of gentlemen die last year. Yes. We'd go wading out in you know on a big sandbar, and it looks to be you know knee deep, uh-huh. uh, you know possibly waist deep. But you got to remember, as that water's going down through there, you've got all these you know six, eight, ten foot pockets that go through there. Yeah, it, it always amazed me the people that can't swim seem to be the ones that ride around in boats with no life jackets on, or they decide that they want to go wading. Yeah. So, and that was the that was the scenario last year. Two people died last year wade fishing in the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm. So it just amazes. Yeah. That. Well, Andy, we appreciate you, buddy, and uh, the work that you do in the TWRA, and you guys will be out this weekend. I know uh, patrolling, oh, yeah. uh, hoping that nothing goes wrong, 
and uh, that's the ticket. And, th- and that's the ticket. And uh, speaking of ticket, uh, you can give tickets, right? <laughs> oh yeah, we get lots of tickets. You just need to make sure that everybody's got a life jacket, and preferably wear it, and have a throw cushion, and make sure that whoever's driving the boat has not been drinking. And and that's right, because yeah. there is a DUI. A, we've, got a on the really, water. we've got a really nice place in Two Hundred One Poplar for you. If you want to do that. <laughs> well, you know, everybody, you know, uh, these are not the bad guys. The, the, Andy no, and his they're guy, not. They are the good guys trying to. Help the bad guys. That's right. That's it. We want everybody to have a good time. Just use your head just a little bit. That's not hard to figure out. (laughs) Hey, we really do want to thank you, Andy, and all of uh, the TWRA guys for everything you guys do because it's not an easy job, and it's a 24-7 job that nobody realizes. That's right. And Andy... uh in 24 uh, 7, Andy will still be doing it in the year 24 7, I think. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> At right, least we hope it. so. All right, Andy Tweed. Thank, have a All great right, day, God. buddy. What's it? Talk to y'all. you later. Talk to y'all you later. Be safe this All right. weekend. We'll do. Take care. Thank you. All right, let's take another break on Outdoors of Larry. We're talking safe boating on this Memorial weekend on uh, Sports 790. You can find. For years, you've heard me talking about my love affair with Gaston's White River Resort near Lakeview, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Larry Ray, and in my opinion, there's no better time to visit Gaston's than in the spring. Gaston's in the spring is all about beauty. Spring offers some of the White River's best fishing opportunities to catch lunker rainbows or pole-bending browns. There's beauty in the air when a rainbow or brown takes flight with hook and mouth. Gaston's offers more than two miles of river frontage. The beautiful scenery along the White River is a photographer's and nature lover's dream come true. But there's more. At Gaston's, enjoying the great outdoors does not mean roughing it. Its beautiful cottages are first class, comfortable, and spotlessly clean. Some even have large redwood decks. And of course, there's the beauty of the resort's restaurant, famous not only for its food, but its location perched over the White River. As resort owner Jim Gaston likes to say, at Gaston's, it costs no more to go first class. To take my advice, make a memory, go to Gaston's.com or call them at 870-431-5202. Tell them Larry Ray sent you. Power. Let that word sink in for a minute. You crave power. You need power. And at Barton Power Sports, we put all that power right in your hands. Barton Power Sports of Arkansas combines the power of seven brands from two locations into one single company whose sole mission is to make sure you have the ultimate power sports experience. Honda, Polaris, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, Victory, and Argo. Each line standing on its own, but backed by the Barton Power Sports commitment to excellent service before, during, and after the sale. Barton Power Sports is open six days a week to accommodate your schedule. No hidden dog fees. What you see is what you get. Your deal done your way. Now that's power. Barton Power Sports with locations in Jonesboro and West Memphis. Go to BartonPowerSports.com. The power of play. Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this May the 24th, uh, which uh, and now I am officially middle-aged for a 142-year-old man now that I've had another birthday. so um, Well, I, belated uh, happy birthday, Yeah, Larry, belated. And, uh, the, the presents are still accepted. You know, uh, okay, like, how about, um, that's good I enough. can't do lunch today no, with I, you. I, I got to work. Uh, you got to work. He's always working. You recognize <laughs> that voice. That's Ron Wong. And here's bonus time with Ron being on the fourth Saturday of the month. And that also means that uh, Bill Cooksey is in with us. And, Bill, I know that uh, you uh, stress boating safety when you've got Bill the 12th in the boat. Ab- you know, absolutely. Like and, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Matter of fact, he's working on his boating test right now he's studying for his that uh, is awesome test so he can drive his sea do and well i i will i but, will but predict gonna, that he will make a good grade uh you know I, I took hunter safety with him i'm not taking this test i with took him. hunter safety with my son too and uh well i'm not going to tell you what happened but they call me out well i will they call me out of the room and tell me larry 
You didn't make it. It's, but your son made it. It's a good thing your grandfather. <laughs> yeah, I, really. No, I wouldn't want to take it again. But hey, <laughs> hey, all right. We got uh, Ben Hogan's our show producer, and uh, we're going to talk right now to our good friend uh, Major Brian Thompson of the TWRA uh, Regional Law Enforcement Supervisor for the Region One here. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. How are y'all? Oh, we're doing great. On the, as we go into what uh, Bill Cooksey called Amateur Weekend. Amateur Weekend on the water. And well, uh, that's that's kind of scary for you guys, isn't it? I mean, because this this is right. It kicks off the as Ron Wong said the 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 tri, the, the, the triple play here. We got triple play. Uh, yeah, Memorial yeah, Weekend of uh, July Fourth and Labor Day. Is this the weekend that uh, is one of them uh, more uh, hard to deal with than the other? No, I, I think that they're all. Let's don't say hard to deal with, yeah, yeah. but they all have their challenges. Uh, uh-huh. For instance, this weekend, you know, today people will be getting out. Uh, today, tomorrow, and Monday be getting out with their yep. boats. Some of them haven't yep. had their boats out in a while. You know, they forgot to make oh, sure their fire right. extinguishers recharged, make sure they got the life jackets, the mice hat, and eat them up, and things <laughs> like that. And, and, you know, you talk about the, the, the you know, it, it's some experienced boaters, too, that we have just as much problems with, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, there's people that spend their whole life on the lake and uh, and drive boats and everything, but they still don't have a lot of knowledge about the lake itself, you know. And you're talking about Bill's son taking a test. Uh, I challenge y'all to take that test after a little after the young man passes it. Uh, it it's very eye opening. Just reviewing it on the internet is is eye opening. Sure it is. I mean, mm-hmm. going through it page by page, it was Well, there's really a lot of things that uh, a lot of people don't know. And, mm-hmm. You know, you talk about some of the the, the experienced boat, boaters getting out there. I mean, which way do you pass a boat when you're heading towards them? Or how to read buoys. Right. That's yeah, right. I right. mean, some real basic stuff that you, that you really need to know when you're on the water. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like the night operation, and like the, every, every one of us has had experience in boats. But uh, have you ever stopped and thought on the red green lights up front? Which one's on the right? Which one is on? Yeah, the left? what's starboard? What's you know, port? So, what does it mean? So when you see a boat, well, you can tell at night which way it is going away from you, just in case his uh, his stern lights off. So yeah, a lot a lot of things involved in there. But you know, uh, this weekend is is the busy weekend. But uh, just something to keep in mind: we have had six fatalities on Tennessee water since the first of the year. Oh mm. my gosh! Mm. Which is is six way too many. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, like we always say, you need to have those life jackets on, folks, regardless of how good a swimmer you are, regardless of the law. Uh, if you fall overboard, whether you're fishing, whether you're in a boat accident or whatever, that life jacket floats, you may not. Well, I know I, I signed a pledge to wear it, Tennessee. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And uh, I have to tell you, a rule in my boat now, and, Bill, I, you probably have the same rule, whenever that gas-powered engine is on you will wear your life mm-hmm. jacket period and life jackets have improved so much oh, uh, so you much. know i can remember growing up and uh fishing over in arkansas and having that uh, orange thing around my neck <laughs> you know it felt like a horse collar yeah you but know, you know and, and hey, i you, still have a bunch of those i got a bunch of those yeah. too but i use them on my arms now as flippers <laughs> <laughs> but you know even the wrap around uh not the inflatable types but the regular wrap around uh, vests now, they have the mesh in there where it's cool, it's comfortable. That's exactly right. There is no reason not to wear one. As long as that boat's moving, you're not going to overheat. That's, yeah. That's exactly you know. right. And it, Brian, is it life jackets the number one cause for uh, accidents? Is the, that still the, the number? Thing? The number one cause of fatalities in Tennessee has been uh, a passenger falling overboard, person yeah. falling overboard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and that's generally the result of the fatalities because they didn't have their life jacket on. Yeah, uh, and I can't, I cannot give you the statistics on how many folks have died with life jackets on, but I would venture to guess it is very, very small percentage of folks. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So you know, think- one of the things I noticed too is, is or I have noticed, is that a lot of people tend to like a few adult beverages on the water. There's a law against that, isn't there? Yes. Now we we enforce that. Our guys are actively. Uh, uh, looking after for, for the boating under the influence, the BUI on the water. Uh, you know, when you drink alcohol and combine that with just the wave action, the sun beating down on you all down the lake, it's, it's a double whammy to you as far as the effects and, and how, you can, how you can operate your boat, how you react to stuff. So, and it is .08 uh, is, is the legal limit or 
in Tennessee for boating, just like it is for driving. Just like it is for driving. We're talking to Brian Thompson. He is the TWRA Region 1 Law Enforcement Supervisor. And uh, I know, Brian, uh, you guys, uh, uh, are you off this weekend? No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will be out in force, won't our, you? Our, our guys, we're out. To, I'm out today. As a matter of fact, <laughs> yeah. I got out. I, since, since I got a few years, I can pull rank every now and then. You let yeah. and work the morning shift. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of folks out here on the water starting to move around. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, uh, but we will uh, we'll be out in force. Through the well, from here on out, we're, we we will be out. You'll be out, and it, yeah. I know this long weekend for that. Well, Brian, thank you for being with us uh, uh, this morning, folks. Go to tnwildlife.org, the TWRA uh, uh, website. You can find all sorts of information. I know you can even pull up. It's what I did here. Let me get it right here on uh, pages 24 and 25 in the fishing guide. It's even got two pages devoted with boating safety checklist. I. Uh, Things to do, wear your pole. Eighty percent of drowning victim is boating accidents were not wearing a personal flotation device. And it's all right here in the in the fish new fishing guide that just came out. Uh, two whole pages on this one. Brian, thank you, buddy. Y'all, thank y'all. Uh, keep us safe this weekend and uh, we hope y'all have a great one and uh, and uh, have a safe one, okay? Thank y'all for hauling at it. All right, buddy, take care. All right. Brian Thompson of the T W R. We're gonna take a break on outdoors with Larry Ray. Come back, talk about uh, a movement that I think that uh, at this time of the year as we celebrate Memorial Weekend, a great thing to talk about is a moment of freedom on Outdoors of Larry Ray on Sports 790. There is no better way You can find out all about it all Outdoors with Larry For years, you've heard me talking about my love affair with Gaston's White River Resort near Lakeview, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Larry Ray, and in my opinion, there's no better time to visit Gaston than in the spring. Gaston's in the spring is all about beauty. Spring offers some of the White River's best fishing opportunities to catch lunker rainbows or pole-bending browns. There's beauty in the air when a rainbow or brown takes flight with hook and mouth. Gaston's offers more than two miles of river frontage. The beautiful scenery along the White River is a photographer's and nature lover's dream come true. But there's more. At Gaston's, enjoying the great outdoors does not mean roughing it. Its beautiful cottages are first class, comfortable, and spotlessly clean. Some even have large redwood decks. And of course, there's the beauty of the resort's restaurant, famous not only for its food, but its location perched over the White River. As resort owner Jim Gaston likes to say, at Gaston's, it costs no more to go first class. To take my advice, make a memory, go to Gaston's.com or call them at 870-431-5202. Tell them Larry Ray sent you. What kind of legacy will we leave when our days upon this earth are gone? Some of my fondest memories growing up were the times my dad took me hunting or fishing. Spending time with him outdoors was magic. I'm Don King for your Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, inviting you to enjoy a Tennessee outdoor adventure. Share the experience with someone you love. Whether your passion is hunting, fishing, boating, or wildlife viewing, our state has it all. Visit our website at tnwildlife.org or download our new app for your smartphone or tablet by searching TWRA on the go and let the legacy of your outdoor adventure begin. Our legacy. WMC Memphis, WMFS HD2 Bartlett, Memphis. Go local on 92.9 FM ESPN. Go national on ESPN 790 AM. Watch the sun rise, new days dawn, and it's calling. the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got good lands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way. You can find out all about it all. Outdoors with Larry Ray. Make some time. Take 
ask a family, ask a friend, but don't delay. Listen up and learn about it all. Outdoors with Larry Ray. Listen up and learn about it all. Outdoors with Larry Ray. Good Saturday morning. Welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on Sports 790. On this Memorial Weekend, as we uh, celebrate our freedom uh, that has been brought to us thanks to the efforts of many, many people over the years. And uh, Memorial, Absolutely. Week, Memorial Weekend is always one of my favorite because on uh, May the 30th is the uh, birthday of my late Uncle Perry, who taught me everything I know about the outdoors and uh, served at Normandy. Uh, I think he would have been 96 if he was still living. But uh, Memorial Weekend is always special for me. And I know it is for this uh, young man that's on with us this morning uh, because he's he's talking about freedom, but he's talking about it in a way that uh, not only relates to uh, uh, what he does in life, but also relates to uh, the freedom to do some things that we take for granted that some folks can't do. And that's our good friend Shane Hall. And uh, you folks know Shane from his Wounded Warrior project that he had last weekend, brought on all those uh, Wounded Warriors into Kentucky Lake for the fishing tournament. But he's also involved in what is known as the Moment of Freedom. Good morning, Shane. Good morning, Larry. How are you all doing this morning? Oh, uh, we're doing great, buddy. And, uh, again, I know that you you said you had a great weekend up at Kentucky Lake last weekend with all those Wounded Warriors and their kids and everything like that. And, uh uh, we appreciate all you folks out there that uh, helped Shane. And I know we had some local folks here that helped him out. He had some other things up there. But I want to talk to Shane a little bit about uh, the moment of freedom. Tell, tell our listeners exactly what is the moment of freedom. Well, the moment of freedom campaign is a uh, an actual campaign that, that consists of a three-year project plan through the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. Um, that provides a moment of freedom in the outdoors for our wheelchair-bound uh, men, women, and children. And that's just not our Tennessee State, you know, uh, wheelchair folks. I mean, that's folks, you know, that are in wheelchairs from around the country that need accessibility and, and have the opportunities to be able to come in and hunt and fish, you know, our uh, our great lands here in the state. So uh, we're actually building uh, blinds as we speak that are all wheelchair-accessible blinds, and uh, we've uh, just purchased our first portable yeah. uh, blind that um, actually we just purchased all four, Larry. I meant to go tell you that. We, okay. uh, we, we've got one in the state now uh, that's in Region 2, uh-huh. and uh, the other three portables will be here sometime within this next week. Well, it's pretty amazing uh, when when we think about this. And I know, Shane, you and uh, uh, TWR, well, well, it's the Fish and Wildlife Commissioner uh, Harold Cannon from over around Chattanooga, uh, you kind of were involved in, in in the so to speak groundbreaking of this thing, right? Well, yeah. What happened is uh, back two years ago, I went to the Fish and Wildlife Commission. I've been friends with the commission for for quite a few years, and uh, doing the things through the NWTF and the, the uh, Wheel Enforcement Program. And um, for a long time, I'd had this dream and this this real big compassion about putting in blinds on uh, WMAs for our wheelchair bound folks that uh, just didn't have that accessibility and didn't have the opportunities to go and um, so I went to this meeting and um, to be honest with you uh, director Carter grabbed me and he says hey I want you to talk this morning and so as it turned out I wasn't prepared so uh, I just spoke from the heart and uh, told each one of them well actually I challenged each one of them to uh, help us put uh, handicapped wheelchair accessible blinds on WMAs across the state and um, the commission just open armed, grabbed hold of this, and Harold Cannon grabbed it and took off with it. And the next, and well, here we are a year and a half later, and and we're already uh, 
Oh, Lord, I think we're nine, uh, 10, 12, 14 blinds already into this with a total of about 2,000 acres of ground that are designated for wheelchair-bound hunters only as of today. Wow, and we're talking right just involved in this thing. It's a part of you. Tell our listeners uh, your situation. Well, in uh, 1990, I fell 27 feet backwards off a bridge. Did you hear that, uh, listeners? In 1990, he fell 27 feet backwards off a bridge. Tell them what yeah. happened to you. Well, the bridge didn't have any rails on it. I landed on concrete, um, and it just it paralyzed me. Uh, it was semi-paraplegic, but uh, I can yes. move my legs. I just can't move my feet. However, I laid in the hospital five and a half months. Mm. Uh, come out, uh, you know, telling me they were going to, they told me I'd have to drive with hand controls the rest of my life. And yes. Wouldn't be able to do much at all. So I taught myself to drive a five-speed. I taught myself how to ride horses and hunt and fish and <laughs> I went back into my, my uh, natural habitat of hunting and fishing and taught myself how to do everything. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> here we are 24 years later, and uh, I've hunted and fished uh, all over this state, and I've been very blessed to be able to do what I do today to help others and to make sure that this uh, a moment of freedom, so to speak, is, is given to each individual that are confined to chairs that... Uh, they can't, uh, you know, get out and enjoy the great outdoors. Well, you know, uh, and the thing about this is this movement is for everyone that wants to get involved, whether you want to give a dollar or a 10000 right, Shane? That's exactly right. Um, and that's the other thing is none of the money that is coming out of the state's budget. Uh, TWRA is not funding this project at all. This is all funded through the Fish and Wildlife Commission, the Tennessee uh, Wildlife Resources Foundation, and what other donations that we can uh that we can get through our website and also uh, just out passing out brochures. There's also ways to donate through there. You can donate uh, a penny if you want to, up to whatever, or you can buy a blind. You have an opportunity to go online at our Moment of Freedom website, which is www.momentoffreedom.org. Yes. And uh, you can go on there, and you can even purchase a blind for $5,000. And what that does is every bit of that money goes into construction of the blinds, permanent blinds, and also goes into building, or I'm sorry, goes into uh, buying these uh, these uh, portable accessible blinds. Well, it's just an amazing thing, and folks, we'll have all this posted on LROutdoors.com. Shane, thank you for uh, taking time on this Saturday morning, buddy. I appreciate your efforts. Y'all have and... a great Memorial Day weekend. I tell you, y'all, remember what this is all about. This Memorial Day is for our freedoms, but it's also for our men and women that fought for our country and given their lives and and their injuries for us to be able to enjoy this weekend. So please, remember what this weekend is really about. All right, Shane Hall, thank you, buddy. You have a great one this weekend, and we'll stay in touch, okay? All right, y'all do the same. Thank y'all for having me on. Thank you, Shane. All right, bye-bye. All right, Shane Hall, uh, a wonderful young man. A a lot of you came to the commission meeting we had in Memphis uh, several months ago, and Shane uh, wheeled in there and and spoke from his heart about uh, what he's trying to do to help the – the folks who need help. And, Absolutely, uh, and, and and I encourage anybody, uh, whether you're an outdoors person or not, uh, whenever you have a chance to help a dis- disabled person give or help. group, give, give them help. Give them help. And I know uh, we got a, a big event coming up this weekend, uh, uh, particularly Sunday, the 42nd annual St. Jude Bass Classic is come going out to, and see. Yeah, you. it's coming out. We got Rick Leslie on the line with us right now. He is the co-director of the St. Jude Bass Classic. Good morning, Rick. Morning, Larry. And I know this being Saturday, you guys got some things going on this afternoon. Tell us what's happening this afternoon before we uh, find out about the tournament tomorrow. Well, today at uh, Performance Marine from noon to four o'clock, we have check-in where all the contestants come. They draw their boat numbers, get their T-shirts, their goodie bags. We also have a, a raffle going on that's open to the public for a $500 Bass Pro gift card. We've got food. We've got drink. Uh, we've got all the auction items that will be up for auction on stage Sunday on display. So everybody, What are some of those with. items you have, Rick? Oh, I think the biggest item we have, we have a Mossberg 512 gauge autographed by the cast of Duck Dynasty. <laughs> Wow. We have, uh, that's that's cool. Generators. We have Brinkman barbecue grills. We even have something for the ladies. We have a coach purse for the ladies to bid on. Oh, do you right. really? Well, I mean, Ron, Ron could get that. You could get that to, you know, easy. easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I know, Rick, uh, you guys really tried to get them swamp people here, and I, I, I applaud your efforts. Uh, 
Tell our listeners that it, uh, it just it just couldn't work out. It wasn't anything anybody's fault or anything like no, that. No, it was just a uh, it was a scheduling issue. We had a um, we thought we had a nonstop leaving Memphis going to Baton Rouge. <laughs> it changed to a uh, a one stop, which was going to kind of mess their plans up because they had from where they live. Uh, it was a three hour drive from Baton Rouge just to get home. So. Yeah. It was going to be some logistics getting them home to get them to their next venue. So, uh, what anything anybody could help, you know, things happen, but they assured us that they'll be with us next year, and they wished us a lot of luck this year. And they really uh, wanted to be here. I know they really wanted oh, yeah. to be here. They uh, this was a thing that worked. Uh, tried to work it out, but uh, now so Sunday, uh, uh, a blast off, uh, and and that's uh, not not in that term anymore now with all the flights, uh, but uh, uh, safe lights, so to speak, and then the weigh-ins will start when. Weigh-in will start at 2 o'clock at uh, Engineers Point, and first flight's due in at 2, last flight's due in at 3, so we'll have about an hour where things will be pretty hectic, and then we're going to start the live auction at 3 o'clock, and again, the public's invited to just come watch the weigh-in, uh, come participate in the auction, because the big thing is every dollar we raise goes directly to the kids at St. Jude Children's Hospital. Now, I want to encourage all of our viewers to go out. Uh, it's a, it's a wonderful event to to watch the the weigh in ceremonies and everything else there for St Jude and and like Rick said they've, they've added on a live auction this year. Are you There's predicting? There's going to be food. What's are you predicting? Yeah, there will there will be a, we'll have food concessions there. We'll yeah, have we're always to back to do. Yeah, we're back to food. But well, I got I got to ask what? I got to ask Wong. So how many right. pounds is it going to take to win? Let, let, let this Wong, year? Yes, uh, I think it's going to take. 19 pounds. 19 pounds? Yeah. 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 Okay. There's All been right. some good fish caught. There's a lot of fish being caught right now. Um, so you take 19 pounds and leave right now. I mean. Uh, I'll take it right now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Rick, Rick don't you think so? Uh, I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> I think 17 pounds will win it. Okay, that's not bad. Then we should have entered, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, anyway, thank you, Rick. That's that. So that's tomorrow afternoon. Uh, they'll start uh, checking them in at Performance Marine, and then uh, Sunday at Engineers Point, uh, they'll have the weigh-in around two. They'll take off at Safe Light. All sorts of things that that uh, fi- that Mossberg autographed by all the Duck Dynasty folks. That ought to bring awesome. uh, a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm sure. It better <laughs> bring more now. <laughs> It'll bring a lot more. It'll now. bring a lot of that. I'm, yeah. I know that and everything. Rick, thank you, buddy. Have a great one. And uh, we'll post all the results on Outdoors of Larry Ray on, uh, as soon as we can get it, okay? All right. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Rick Leslie. All right. Let's take our next break. Come back and uh, wrap up this week's show as we have five Saturdays in May. That's hard oh, to believe. Awesome. That's great for me. Yeah, I love it. But, but, ben, but, ben Ho- Big and Hogan, he loves it, too. I know he does. And, and, and He's I got help in here this morning to you, try to you help You know, him. the next, yeah. next show right. is going to be kind of special, too. Yeah. All of them are special. Yeah. But it's going to be super special. Right. Let's, we'll be talking fishing. That's why you say that, right? Well, that, that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we might have some singing going on. Oh, that's next week. Yeah, oh, he said next week. Yes. Oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a year older. I'm hard. I'm de- deaf a little bit here. So, right, let's take a break. We'll be right back <laughs> on Outdoors with Larry Ray on Sports 790. You can find out all about it on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Power. Let that word sink in for a minute. You crave power. You need power. And at Barton Power Sports, we put all that power right in your hands. Barton Power Sports of Arkansas combines the power of seven brands from two locations into one single company whose sole mission is to make sure you have the ultimate power sports experience. Honda, Polaris, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, Victory, and Argo. Each line standing on its own, but backed by the Barton Power Sports commitment to excellent service before, during, and after the sale. Barton Power Sports is open six days a week to accommodate your schedule. No hidden dog fees. What you see is what you get. Your deal done your way. Now that's power. Barton Power Sports, with locations in Jonesboro and West Memphis. Go to BartonPowerSports.com. The power of play. What kind of legacy will we leave? 
when our days upon this earth are gone. Some of my fondest memories growing up were the times my dad took me hunting or fishing. Spending time with him outdoors was magic. I'm Don King for your Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, inviting you to enjoy a Tennessee outdoor adventure. Share the experience with someone you love. Whether your passion is hunting, fishing, boating, or wildlife viewing, our state has it all. Visit our website at tnwildlife.org or download our new app for your smartphone or tablet by searching TWRA on the go and let the legacy of your outdoor adventure begin. Our legacy. Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray as uh, we close out today's show on this May the 24th. Uh, Bill Cooksey and Ron Wong in studio, and we've been talking a lot about uh, boating safety. We've jumped around a little bit about big youth events coming up, about the St. Jude Bass Classic uh, coming up on tomorrow. We talked about a new book coming out about Jim Zumbo. Uh, now we're going to talk a little fishing because we couldn't get by the show without talking fishing with uh, <laughs> for Ron and Bill uh, to get in here talking. I know Ron and I myself were over at uh, uh, Birchtown, Tennessee, recently for the Tennessee Outdoor Writers Association Conference, and Ron had a chance to go out and uh, fish a little bit with our next guest, uh, Jerry Reagan, and I know Ron had a great time uh, Caught some fish. Uh, uh, it was and Jerry spoke awesome. spoke highly about you, and so Gosh, uh, I don't know why we need to get that confirmed <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> need to record that. Yeah, we are right now. Yeah, and so we have Jerry Reagan on the line with us, uh, fishing out of Dale Hollow Lake over there, Ron. And I know, uh, won't you introduce Jerry to us? Well, Jerry, uh, you know, like Larry said, uh, we were at the Tennessee Outdoor Riders Association annual meeting. And, at Birdstown, which is on the banks of uh, Dale Hollow Lake, and one of the things that Sunset we Sunset Resort, yeah, that's, that's right, right, at Sunset Resort and Marina, uh-huh. and uh, one of the things we had an opportunity to do was we had a day of activity, so obviously I chose to fish, and uh, the Birdstown Chamber of Commerce was nice enough to set up a bunch of nice guides for us, and I got somebody really, really uh, special now as i look back and somebody that uh i now call a friend um quite a fisherman had a super super time he's a rookie on the flw tour this year uh my friend jerry reagan jerry how are you this morning i am better than i deserve ron thank you (laughs) well you know i gotta tell you again thank you so much for the wonderful day on the water at dale hollow lake the sight fishing for the bass and and just all a, a good time. It's too bad it had to end when it did, but you know they called this meeting and I had to go. <laughs> well, well you're, you're you're quite welcome, and uh, I want to tell you again publicly that I just had an awesome time, and uh, I really really enjoyed being in the boat with you, Ron. It was a great time. It absolutely was, Jerry. You are this is your first year on the FLW tour. As a professional, you were a co-angler for some number of years before that. Um, what has it been like in terms of fishing for you now? Well, as a pro, you know, this is just something that I've kind of always wanted to do for a long time. And, um, you know, just to have the opportunity to compete against the best of the best is just awesome. And, um, you know, I've not done that as well as I would have liked, but um, I'm still enjoying it very much. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to turn things around in these next two tournaments at Pickwick and uh, Kentucky Lake. But um, overall, it's it's been a good experience. Well, you know, I, I think the, these lakes probably set up a little bit better yeah. for you because of what you're used to fishing. and. But a lot of people don't know. You know, they think, well, you have fished all your life, which you have, but you had a real, real job for some number of years, didn't you? I did. <laughs> I, I taught school for about 39 years, so, uh, you know, I wasn't able to fish as much as I would have liked. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of these lakes that we're going to, I, I really have no experience on them whatsoever. And, uh, 
you know, as you well know, that that can be tough with uh, no experience on a lake. Absolutely, Jerry. You know, being a retired school teacher now and being and having a full time job, you are essentially a weekend fisherman uh, before you turn pro. And kind of tell all of our listeners. How did you really start that competitive fishing? In other words, local tournaments and then co-angler and, and, and well, what was your progression? Well, that's that's pretty much it. You know, I started out, um, oh, uh, early, mid-80s in uh, just fishing some local tournaments. And then I progressed over to the um, what we now call the BFL tournaments, which is uh, mm-hmm. the weekend fisherman series on the FLW Tour. Right. And um, I did that for a number of years. And then um, as I got a little bit of time, um, then I graduated over to going as a co-angler on the FLW Tour. And uh, uh, fortunately for me, I was able to uh, win the uh, Chickamauga Tournament um, last year as a co-angler, which um, afforded me the entry fees for this year on the pro side. So, there you go. Spoken uh, like a true uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, Jerry, you can't do all of this just by yourself. First of all, you know, you have a wonderful wife that supports you. Uh, and then you have some wonderful sponsors that help you out, too. Oh, that's, that's correct. And uh, without my wife, Gail, um, I, none of this would be, would be possible, and uh, uh, she's been she's been really supportive and and uh, just an awesome spouse, to be honest with you. What about the Dale Hollow? I got to ask you about Dale Hollow mm-hmm. Lake. I mm-hmm. mean, that's where you live, that's where you fish, and uh, everybody knows Dale Hollow is the the the, the place for Absolute, them old brown fish. That's right, them old brown fish. You know that uh, the floating the world, fly, the world record. Right. Came out well, of actually, um, actually, the the three largest recorded smallmouth uh, have all come out of Dale Hollow Lake. Wow! Wow! So everybody yeah. goes there, thinks they're going to catch that. And I know. I I thought Ron would get the world record with you. Really, I did. <laughs> well, I, I was hoping that Jerry would put me on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, you know, um, Dale Hollow receives a lot of pressure yes, it does. anymore, and um, it's. Uh, I don't know how many of those um, big fish we still have left in the lake, mm-hmm. but they, they sure have a lot of lures uh, presented in front of them. They do, so. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we were there, even during a weekday, it was pretty amazing how many boats were out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, people yeah. come there and they say, well, but that's an attraction. And not only that, folks, uh, if you're looking for a great place to go, uh, it's about six hours from Memphis. It's real easy to go right up the interstate and then right up, uh, what, 111? 111. Right on up to Birdstown. Uh, I will advise you if you have a certain uh, telephone uh, uh, that carrier I carry that I use, will not Me be able too. to pick up up there. So yeah. I'm not going to tell what that, that is. That's not a bad deal all the time. That, that Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's, that's there, true. there's something to be said for that. Yeah. Now, now Jerry, do you do guide, do you do guide service? Well, actually, I do not. Okay. Um, well, that's just, what I uh, like about I, you. You're, every you're, now and then, I have an opportunity to, uh, you know, take someone out, like um, about Ron, uh, you know, with like the uh, Chamber of Commerce or something like that. And well, what I'm about, always happy to do that. What about uh, Kentucky Lake and Pickwick? You are you ready for those challenges? Well. Uh, <laughs> I can say yes, and, uh, <laughs> or I can say no. I I hope I am. Yes. How's that? That sounds good. That sounds hey, if good. I might, I'd like to go back and um, and and mention something about Dale Hollow Lake. Yeah, um, Dale Hollow Lake is just a beautiful, beautiful lake, and for people who want to come and um, and and maybe not fish, but just uh, water ski or just enjoy boating. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And um, I wanted to mention the largemouth mm-hmm. in Dale Hollow Lake. Yeah. Wow! Oh my gosh! It's yeah. one of the best lakes in the country right now for largemouth. And um, if you want to sight fish somewhere around the Memphis area, that's where to go. Uh huh. Well, oh, I think it's uh, just just Google. Uh, Dale Hollow Lake. Uh, Sunset Marina is where we stayed. Uh, the cabins were wonderful. Uh, they got the rustic cypress and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then that is a huge place with a restaurant and everything uh, full 
uh, facility to work out of and everything. Well, well, Jerry, thank you for taking time on this Saturday morning to be with us. Uh, uh, good luck at uh, Pickwick and uh, good luck at Kentucky Lake. Those are great fisheries, and I know you got to uh, make the cut because I want to see you on cut day. I'll be there. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jerry? He's not putting I any. Pre- he's not putting any pressure on I you. I will be there. Yeah, he, New Johnsonville. Yeah, New Just, Johnsonville. Yeah. You know the, the, the you. Don't you live at Kentucky Lake now, just about? Uh, uh, here in a few minutes, I'm heading that oh, way there again. He uh, thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, Jerry Reagan, thank you for being with us, buddy, and good luck at those next two tournaments, and we'll stay in touch, okay? All right. Thank you so much, guys. All and, right. again, uh, Ron, uh, great to have fished with you, and uh, I'm like you. I hope I have a friend for life. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you do. Thank you, Jerry. We'll talk to you, all right? All right. Bye-bye. All right, all right. Jerry Reagan, uh talking about uh, Dale Hollow Lake. Uh, let me tell you about uh, what's going on next week's show as uh, Ron kind of uh, whispered a little bit there. Dale, uh, uh, going from Dale Hollow <laughs> to Don King. And everybody going to say, this is not Don King, the boxing promoter, okay? This is Don King. This is Don King this, with your Tennessee it, it, Wildlife Resources Agency. That was pretty good. That was good. All right, all right. Bill Don, Otter, yeah. Bill's working on yeah, he is the, <laughs> on a new career. He is the chief of the, of the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency INE division, and also he'll bring his guitar along because he is the author and singer of Outdoors with Larry Ray's theme song. He's the writer of uh, one of Reba McIntyre's all-time greatest hits. He's a member of the group that uh, called Route 66 that uh, every year – uh, performs up and down the old Route 66 with his singing group, and he's also a pretty good uh, guy when it comes to talking about uh, PWRA. And he'll be in studio next week. Also, we're going to talk to uh, uh, Brent Walden. He is the operations and analysis for Icy Breeze. That's a new cooler that I want to find out a lot about, keeping you mm. cool and things like mm. that. And he's going to be on next week. We're going to talk to Sean Morley. He's the three-time Los Angeles Times novel writing contest winner and author of the new book, Incredible and True Fishing Stories, that I know Ron can't wait to read about. Cause Absolutely. National, well, he's probably in it. Yeah, uh, he's probably in yeah, it. Ron, right. Ron is in it. <laughs> uh, National Fishing and Boating Week is June 1st through 8th, too. And then we're going to close out next week's show with uh, the one and only Denise Parker. She is the USA Archery CEO and uh a former Olympian, uh, one of our favorite people on Outdoors with Larry Ray. They have recently launched uh, Explore Archery, uh, an innovative uh, education program to get more young people involved in archery. And, of course, Gene Smith and Charlie Covington, the only radio show that has its own poet laureate, Charlie Covington, will be in studio next week, and he has written a new poem about All buck right. knives. About buck knives. And we're going to try to get... C.J. Buck on next week's show and surprise Charlie with having him on as he reads his poem. If Charlie That'd be get, good. If he doesn't get too nervous or anything like that. Okay, Ben Hogan, our show producer. Thank you, Ben, for taking care of us. Um, Bill Cooksey, be safe. Have a great Memorial Weekend. Up Thank in you, Larry. Lake. Y'all all you, have fun this weekend and give everybody a little bit of space. Get, and don't forget, look for Bill. He'll be on the side in the lawn chair watching you launch your boat. That's, That's right. right. And I'll be out at uh, the St. Jude Bass Classic uh, at the weigh-in and and enjoying all of those festivities. And I know Ron will take care of us up there. I'll be on the road today. I'm heading to Arkansas for my brother-in-law's 75th birthday. Safe travels. So I'll be traveling today and everything. But I'll see you next week. And this is Outdoors to Larry Ray. And this is Larry Ray reminding you to do each and every week. It doesn't cost an extra cent to be a good sport. And God bless the USA. You can find out all about it all Outdoors with Larry Ray For years you've heard me talking about my love affair with Gaston's White River Resort near Lakeview, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Larry Ray, and in my opinion, there's no better time to visit Gaston than in the spring. Gaston's in the spring is all about beauty. Spring offers some of the White River's best fishing opportunities to catch lunker rainbows or pole-bending browns. There's beauty in the air when a rainbow or brown takes flight with hook and mouth. Gaston's offers more than two miles of river frontage. The beautiful scenery along the White River is a photographer's and nature lover's dream come true. But there's more. At Gaston's, enjoying the great outdoors does not mean roughing it. Its beautiful cottages are first class, comfortable, and spotlessly clean. Some even have large redwood decks. And of course, there's the beauty of the resort's restaurant, famous not only for its food, but its location perched over the White River. 
As resort owner Jim Gaston likes to say, at Gaston, it costs no more to go first class. To take my advice, make a memory, go to Gaston's.com or call them at 870-431-5202. Tell them Larry Ray sent you. Power. Let that word sink in for a minute. You crave power. You need power. And at Barton Power Sports, we put all that power right in your hands. Barton Power Sports of Arkansas combines the power of seven brands from two locations into one single company whose sole mission is to make sure you have the ultimate power sports experience. Honda, Polaris, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, Victory, and Argo. Each line standing on its own, but backed by the Barton Power Sports commitment to excellent service before, during, and after the sale. Barton Power Sports is open six days a week to accommodate your schedule. No hidden dog fees. What you see is what you get. Your deal done your way. Now that's power. Barton Power Sports with locations in Jonesboro and West Memphis. Go to bartonpowersports.com. The power of play. 